All right. Good afternoon, educators. Thank you all for joining us. Hi, everyone. Hello. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining hey, us. Hello. Oh. Oh. oh my gosh. Hi. How are you? Oh my God. How are you? I'm I'm good. Thank you. I'm in class right now. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. If that's okay. Yeah. yeah. That's good. We definitely understand. I know there's there was some educators coming for class. How's everyone doing today? Let me clear my screen. There we go. All right. Um, if you're just joining us, welcome to the Medical Front and Back Office Advisory Board. I'm going to give everyone a second that is still coming in. As we're getting started, um, as you're coming in, I know some educators are still finishing class. If you're finishing class, please be sure to mute yourself. Um, we do understand the transition at this time. Once the panels begin, we do encourage that you turn your cameras off, and this will help us highlight the speakers. Um, we have some great information coming from some college representatives, as well as some industry representatives. And then also in your name frame, please make sure that we can see your first and last name. If you need any help updating your name, feel free to send me a message or my coordinator gave Torres a message and we can help you update your name. For sign-in purposes, please type your first and last name, title, school name and or school district in the chat. And this is what we share back with your school district so that way they know that you did participate today. And again, for those who are entering, please be sure to mute yourself upon entry and make sure we can see your name. Also, if any educators would like to network, the chat is open throughout the meeting. So feel free to message any other educators um, privately if you have any questions or if they've um, shared any resources in the chat. If you are sharing any resources such as links or flyers, um, feel free to email them to me as well. I'll share my email shortly and I can share those resources in the information packet within the next two weeks. So some- I'm Sorry, too. Can you guys see my name as Helen Fay? Because I'm using my phone. Yes, I believe we saw okay. Helen Fay. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank no you. No worries, yes, thank you. Um, some updates um, coming with Vitalink. Um, as some of you have heard, Dr. Brian Dozer, <laughs> who's here in our picture still, we'll update that. Um, but he has transitioned over to Coastline ROP now as their superintendent. And our new president of Vitalink will be named within the next couple of weeks. So we will do a full announcement on all of our social media platforms. Um, as well with updates from Vitalink, uh, we are coming to a close on our digital media arts competition, the My Dream Career competition. So semifinals will be announced at the beginning of April. We also have our Robot OC competition coming soon at the end of April. Dates will be announced soon. Um, so if you have any family, educators, colleagues, or students that would like to join, we will have that information shared as well. At the end of today's meeting, I will share the Medical Advisory Board evaluation. Um, that way we can hear back from you and your honest opinion, which definitely helps us with our future meetings and confirming any new representatives that you may wanna hear from or that you may know personally and you feel like them sharing their information would definitely benefit the educators here in the meeting. Okay, and without further ado, I will turn it over to the college representatives. I think first we're going to hear from Dr. Lori Sinkowitz. You are, and would you unshare? Yeah, there we go. Yes, ma'am. You unshare, and I will share. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn my camera off. 
college reps, feel free to keep your camera on and I will leave it to Ms. Lori. Thank you. You're welcome. There we go. Oh, when I set this up before, I, uh, Sorry, you guys. We um, I even practiced this before to make sure I've got it, and I messed it up. Shoot. Hey, Lynn, do you want to just start for a second and just start your introduction? It'll just take me a second to fix this. Oh, guess what? Miss Lynn, you are muted. Hey, Lynn, you're muted. This is my fourth Zoom meeting today. You think I'd be That's all right. up on it. So um, I'll go ahead and start. I'm Lynn Cattrall yeah. from Orange Coast College. And um, I'll be the moderator today. It's Susan, Lori, and myself representing uh, the colleges. So I work for Orange Coast College. I'm the program director there, professor in allied health. And... Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to just go over uh, a few notes that I have from my past advisory minutes so that I am in compliance with my college's uh, institutional effectiveness. So our enrollment is uh, actually up. Everything is fine. However, we did have to cut back in students accepted into our program because of COVID and the spacing in our laboratory. Um, the last two cohorts graduated at 100%. 100% had a job at the end of one year. Um, our state licensure and certification exam pass rates is 100% per student self-reported, and that's through California Medical Assistance Association, or NHA. Uh, our employment data outcome is excellent. Um, we have it listed at 92.3%. COVID really did take its hit with us, but we're, we're turning that around, turn the corner, all of our students were able to finish. And then <clears throat> the big concern last time for us was, was COVID. We had to take students out of clinical, and put them back in. So our expectations for our students have been fulfilled. Um, as far as new program developments, we are still working, uh, although we put it on hold, on a medical assisting outpatient medical billing, insurance billing program, and health insurance basic coding for outpatient services, that'll be a uh, adjunct certificate program added to our current curriculum uh, in which the students can receive either an AS degree or a certificate or both, depending upon um, what their outcome is. We do have our three prerequisites withstanding medical terminology, um, anatomy and physiology with a lab. And then of course, we have an introductory course in which the students are able to um, sign up for a program. It's called um, Allied Health 010. We've recently added to that and we put medical assisting and dental assisting. We made a new 010 exploratory class just for those students. We found that especially due to COVID, it wasn't really fair to have all these students um, with a long wait list for this 010 class for the two year programs. So we recently just started it, it's very successful. We have over 60 students enrolled in it. So we have the students out, out there, we're just waiting for permission to fill our labs back up again. And then um, industry has been with us the whole time. We have so much support. I really don't have enough positions for externs to fulfill the needs of my employer, so that's good. And Memorial Care in general uh, and Kaiser have been excellent in helping us out with that. And so our big revision and program structure would still be to continue on with the um, medical insurance billing. And as far as technology and so forth, um, our, our funds are adequate and the college has been uh, excellent in providing us all the PPE that we would need. So uh, the other exciting news is that I'm retiring. So if you know of anybody that's interested, um, they're not gonna fly it as a full-time tenure position, but rather a full-time one-year contract. And that would be teaching the clinical part of uh, medical assisting, as well as being the program director and clinical coordinator. So my last day is May 28th, woohoo! 
so slightly exciting there. And um, are there any questions? I think I'll just pass this back to Lori yeah. now. Are we I'm ready? good. Lori yeah. will finish out and then we'll come back to Susan if that's okay with everybody. Yeah, we'll go from there. Very good, okay. Um, well, hello everybody. I know many of you, but not everybody. So I'll start at the beginning. I'm Lori Senkowitz and I'm the Regional Director for Employer Engagement, also known as the Health Workforce Initiative um, for the Orange County Community Colleges. And um, I've been in this role for almost eight years now, came from nursing faculty before that, and then came from the hospital side in administration um, before that as well. So, there we go, okay. So if you are thinking of your students and many of your students, I know Ms. Faye um, and some of the other programs, you have a strong MA program, but if you're thinking, your students are thinking about going into the health careers, um, nursing or any of the other careers, how can you get them prepared? And is health the right career for your students? Well, the prerequisites that most of the programs need are very strong in math and science. So you would want your students at the high school level um, to complete at least two years, if not all four years of all of their math up into algebra, uh, two to four years of their sciences um, you know, with labs and a heavy emphasis on English if they can take their English for all four years. The personal characteristics that are really important as well are to have those people skills and work really well in a team. That's one of the things that you know we do as healthcare providers is we communicate with our, our patient, their family, and the whole members of the healthcare team. So that would be an important skill. Also having those critical thinking and communication skills, you have to be able to call a physician or another team member and accurately predict and, and determine what's happening to that patient. So very strong skills with that. And then one important thing is to be able to have a clear background check. When that student has in their program, they'll be doing a life scan. But as they move to licensure, it's very important that they have a clear background check that will help them and assist them into getting into their, um, taking their boards and their license. What are some of the industry trends that we're seeing right now? First off, um, certainly one of the trends is that we're moving to more and a more advanced education. So for registered nurses, we certainly are strong on the associate degree at our two-year college, the two-year degree at our community colleges. And then we're really supporting our associate degree grads to go on and get their bachelor's degree. Um, there is some preference in the industry to have that four-year bachelor's degree, especially in nursing. And we're working on pathways to take our students and move them forward to complete their bachelor's degree. And that was something that you know, I did and many of us you know, have done. The other trend is elderly care and home care. Those are still very, very strong areas as individuals are aging in place and aging in their home. That's something that, home, that care is moving to that home environment. There are greater demands on quality and on outcomes. There are um, many, many accreditation agencies that are looking at outcomes and hospitals that are able then to, to advertise that they have met certain outcomes. And so that's something that's really important. And then the last area um, or one final area is technology. And um, as we've moved forward, we really have um, moved forward to the electronic health record. And it's an art really to sit with a patient and get information from that patient and do your assessment of that patient and to document in the computer at the same time. Um, for those of us who give medications to be able to, instead of just run into your patient's room with a cup full of pills, you now really need to be able to use a barcode to be able to scan that patient's ID band, scan all those medications to make sure that we have you know, accuracy in giving those medications as well. And then um, much of our technology is connected to our medical devices. And so that's 
really important to be comfortable with using a lot of the medical devices as well. So what are the growing areas and the really strong areas to encourage our students to go into based on our labor market data? Uh, still registered nursing is still a very strong area. Um, we want to you know, encourage those who wanna go into the health field, Red, our, becoming an RN is an area, but there's so many other areas as well. Um, becoming a nursing assistant is a great way to start, to you know, start their career as they go on to school. Our medical assisting programs, as we're discussing today, are um, great programs. We have great programs at the K through 12, as well as at the community college level. And so that's a strong area. I think Susan and Lynn would agree with that, that that's a great place to start their career or to have a very a lifelong career. Um, personal care assistance, uh, medical records, which is also called HIT, um, are strong areas. The laboratory, so um, clinical laboratory technologists, which is at the bachelor's level, and um, MLTs, which is at the associate degree level, are also very strong. Um, and then um, x-ray techs and all the specialties there are all very important as well. And then one last area is certainly the emphasis on mental health, and that touches all areas of healthcare. And so that's a strong area um, to look at as well. Some of the other areas that to look at uh, that are not growing as strong, but that are nice and steady are respiratory care. We have a very um, strong program at OCC for that. Again, that home care that I discussed, dental hygiene and dental assisting is also important. Paramedics and EMTs, there's a great need for that area, for those areas, especially for EMTs. And then some of the other programs that are a little bit smaller and don't have as much of a need certainly are the therapies. So physical therapy and occupational therapy to start at that nursing, that aid level, you can go to assistant and then you know, a full PT and OT. Uh, I talked about ultrasound, there's other cardiovascular techs and then pharmacy tech um, as well. So that's just kind of a highlight of some of the programs that, you know, are growing and that we have in our area. We have many, many, many programs within health. And so if you have a student that's thinking they want to go into healthcare, um, nursing, of course, I'm always going to emphasize nursing. I'm proud to be a nurse and that's an area, but there's so many other areas for them to go into as well. All of that. All right, Lynn, I'm going to kick it back over to you so we can talk to Susan. I'm going to stop sharing. Let's see. There you go. Um, I just wanted to revisit uh, a few of these questions, if you don't mind, and then I'll finish up OCC and then we'll move oh, on. Oh, yes. To Sorry, Lynn. Yes. Okay? Uh -huh. um, one of the things that our students always struggle with are the soft skills. So the development of teaching these things and what we have sort of, um, Anita and I, over the years, we have time cards. The students have to punch in. They're required to call us or email us if they're not going to be at clinic. And then we have video series that we show the students. We do a lot of role modeling, obviously. And then Anita and I have also been doing mock interviewing with the students to getting, you know, up to snuff and getting them prepared for when they go out and actually do a, an interview. Um, Lori mentioned all the different uh, certifications. So our um, our program is not accredited. We are no, we haven't been with the AAMA in over ten years. But our certifications, uh, our, our class and curriculum certainly do allow our students to sit for their um, CMA certification exams. And I said we go with California uh, Certified Medical Assistance Association or CHA. Um, we do have a lot of great programs at OCC and I did want to mention also that uh, if you know anybody that would be interested, we've lost our... Um, patient care aid instructor. She's moved mm -hmm. on. Uh, she's a physical therapist, so, but she moved on to full-time faculty at another college in physical therapy. So I can't really blame her, but we're looking for somebody to replace that person. And then um, CVT, we're still looking for an instructor in CVT and also in SLIPA, speech language pathology. And then uh, one of the questions was, how are you challenging your students in the classroom? Well, we challenge them obviously every day by trying to keep up with industry standards and keep up our excellent reputation that we have within the community. 
And then um, does your department assist students with internships? No, we don't. We place the students. Um, it's just sort of worked out for us. I know in some programs, the students are challenged to find their own internship, but I think it's important that um, I know where they're going and I know the person and all the credentials and backgrounds are checked. And then speaking of background, in our programs, if um, your student is interested in going to an OCC program, they will have to have a full background check and drug screen even before uh, you know, when they go out to clinical, background check is done initially, but before clinical, they definitely will have to have a full physical exam with background check, uh, titers, and now everybody wants a COVID booster, so um, encourage your students to make sure that they are boosted with their vaccinations, and then memorial care requires a separate drug screen uh, 30 days before they go on the floor, so that's something else to tell your students. Just you know, because they made it through one time doesn't mean that they're good to go for the rest of their life. Um, and that's probably important, like Helen, for your high school students to know that as well. And then um, we've always had a close relationships with the ROPs as far as CTE pathway goes. So that is ongoing. And that pretty much uh, finishes up for OCC. So I'll turn it over to Susan now. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lori. Um, can you all hear me okay? Yes? Okay. Um, so during COVID um, at Saddleback College, we've um, been able to have some upgrades to our classrooms, which has been wonderful. One of them has been with our sound system and our cameras, but we get a little bit of echoing and we're still trying to resolve that. So I'll apologize up front. Yeah, you are um, echoing a little bit, Susan. I know, and I have no way of turning oh, it yeah. down, and I apologize. Um, I'll, t I'll turn the volume down. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay. So that's good. I just won't be able to hear my myself or you, but that's that'll work. Um, so I'm from Saddleback College. Um, I'm the department chair for the medical assistant program. Um, I've met many of you before, and to those of you whom I have not, um, Nice to see you, nice to uh, have you here, especially on a Friday afternoon. Um, so interesting, um, as listening to Lori and, and, and Lynn, um, at Saddleback, during the pandemic, MA enrollment has dropped a little bit, um, but the need has certainly been there. Um, I'm averaging about three to four phone calls and emails per week from offices, no lie wanting students, wanting to hire. So as the Bureau of Labor Statistics data shows, the one of the leading healthcare industry fields is medical assisting. And we're here to serve. Um, we have a close relationship with our um, contracted clinical affiliates. Um, they are, they take our students as externs. Um, I have students interview for positions for their 160 hour externship um, because that's part of using those soft skills that we've practiced, um, interviewing techniques, creating their cover letter, resume. Um, although some of the front end work has been done for them, um, but just because they're given a site name and contact information does not mean it's, it's a done deal right? They still have to secure it. Um, so um, we started doing that a couple years ago and it's, it has worked well. Um, we have seen um, some changes and challenges with our student demographics, specifically um, students coming in, maybe their language, their writing skills, and their math skills are not as strong as we'd like to see. So we are making efforts to help strengthen those. But if you were looking at uh, courses at a high school level in which a student could take to better prepare them, as Lori mentioned, they really need to work on those STEM classes. Um, that would be helpful. I think um, a lot of times we get students and they think, oh, it's an MA program, how easy, you know, I'll go in and sign up. And then they sign up with us and they realize, oh my gosh, this is not easy. Um, but rightfully so, because they finish and, you know, after 16 
months to 24 months, they are going to have a certificate of achievement or a an associate's degree that's going to really serve them well. Um, I've been teaching at Saddleback now actually 20 years, but it's not been 20 years full time. Um, but um, I am tenured faculty now. Um, yes, it is my passion and my love. So um, very proud of our program. Um, we do not have a bachelor's in medical assisting. We do not have an associate's in medical assisting. Our students can work towards an associate of science in health science, which then would ultimately transfer into a four-year four degree. At Saddleback College, if I may, I'd like to share my screen ever so quickly. I've been doing this for the last couple of years, but sometimes I do get little snags. Can you all see my screen? Okay. Yes. So if a student were interested in looking at the medical assisting program, the quickest way I tell them, just go to the college website and in the little search field, type medical assisting, then they'll find us. Um, over in the corner, we have uh, on the side here, we have a listing of all of our um, health science programs. So they can also find out that information. We newly have adopted a um, certified nursing assistant program. We have an American Sign Language program, HIT, EMT and paramedic, um, human services, which uh, deals specifically with mental health. Um, uh, careers. And we also have an MLT program, which also has a phlebotomy uh, short certificate program. Um, as far as the medical assisting program goes, we actually offer, and you can see this, these are our pathway courses or programs. We have an administrative, a clinical, or a comprehensive program. And these courses are listed and we really strive for our students to take courses in order. Um, sometimes they get out of sequence, which makes it difficult. And then there's more apt to be um, a, a lengthening uh, between starting and externing. Um, the programs can be completed in 16 months if courses are taken uh, as offered but um, that doesn't always happen. We're finding that most of our students attend college part-time because they need to work. That does pose a bit of a problem with program completion because it ends up dragging things out longer um, and, and that does make it hard. So we, as much as possible, we try to encourage them to not work a full-time job during our program. Um, our program does not have an application process. So essentially a student can just sign up for courses, um, which is not uh, the best way in which we recommend. Um, we do want them to take these core courses first, um, but we are working on an application process for down the road, but they, anybody can sign up. Um, if your students are looking at medical assisting, I would ask and tell them in the summer, take medical terminology. Um, they could even take introduction to medical assisting. It's being offered in the summer as well as healthcare organization practices. Um, this covers front and back office types of um, skills. We, we go over a lot of those soft skills, communication, um, registration, scheduling, um, using the telephone, um, uh, group work. Um, we, we touch on each EHR and documentation. Um, our documentation, we in all of our courses, we really work hard to make sure that our students are documenting correctly. Um, and, and that's another way in which quality is measured in healthcare practices and organizations. Um, so it is stressed throughout the program. Um, as you all know, there's a proper way to document in a medical record or health record. Um, there's liability reasons, et cetera. So I would strongly encourage your students just come to our website. Um, 
all of the information is there. Um, I do want to highlight something. Um, we do have an Occupational Skills Award in Medical Insurance and Billing. We also offer um, courses which go towards a certificate with scribing or the medical scribe. That's a person that um, would follow the doctor basically with a computer when the doctor goes in for the exam so that the doctor is hands-free and they can focus on the patient as opposed to the computer. And then the other um, thing that we do offer is our administrative courses as well as our comprehensive program courses. Um, those students can take um, another one of our classes, which is offered in the summer, and that is a, um, it's the CPC exam prep course. It's an advanced form of a coding class. Um, the HIT students also can take that class as well. And um, our students then can sit for um, a national exam um, in coding. Um, our students take or are, are prepared to sit for the CCBMA um, certification exam. Um, and as like Lynn, um, our students are 100% self-reported as far as the pass rate. And then um, just finishing up as far as our employment. Um, currently, our students are getting hired out of the externship and our clinical affiliates include Memorial Care, who's hired several of our students in the last semester and previous semesters, um, Providence, um, as well as Optum Health, um, and then all of our various independent um, group practices and solo practitioners. So um, we're here, uh, you know, we, we are South County, but um, we are definitely open for business and we would love to see your students at our location as well. Thank you. I'll turn it over unless there's any other questions. Thank you so much, college representatives, um, high school representatives, and ROP representatives. Um, this is a chance for if you'd like to unmute or come on camera if you have any questions um, from these representatives. Um, you can also list your questions in the chat if you'd like. Okay. Um, I do see a question that was submitted by Leanne Matthews, um, and they asked, what have the starting salaries been? Uh, Ms. Leanne, is this to all colleges or a specific college? Um, if you'd like to unmute. Mostly as it pertains to the medical assistants that are graduating. Answer that. I know yeah. for us, because um, that's one of the questions I like to ask. Um, our partners. And I can say that they have gone up. Um, I'm seeing anywhere from $17 to $19 an hour is what's been reported to me, both independently at doctor's offices as well as the larger practices. I'd agree with that, Susan. Uh, most of my students, I'd say 17 on the low end. And I do have some students who are in the low 20s, uh, which is fairly good. Um, if it's a corporate, uh, like Memorial, that each office has their own pay, pay uh, scale, if you will, versus like chalk, they have a standard set rate. Um, but I had one student, I think it was like $20, $25 and some change, but she had um, a very extensive administrative assistant background in uh, from previous employment. So that sort of added to her resume and she was a little bit older, but I, I'd say, yeah, between 17 and $20 is about average is what I'm seeing. And then I have a lot of doctors that are calling to get students. Um, and I always ask them, may I ask you what your starting salary is? And sometimes they'll tell me $15 and I say, well, they can work at Taco Bell for $15. Exactly. You know, these kids have gone to school for two years. You need to up the ante just a little bit. 
Yeah, we're finding the same thing at North Orange County ROP. We also have medical assisting programs. And like you, Susan, you know, our enrollment's been a little bit low. Um, I, and I don't know if it's the hesitancy with people wanting to re-enter or come into the healthcare with the state of COVID. Um, so I'm hoping that as that, you know, as people get more used to it, even though it's becoming an endemic, that they'll be more comfortable. Um, and as we, you know, educate them and give them the tools and skills necessary, such as, you know, how to don off PPE, how to stay safe, that they would feel more comfortable with that. But um, Lynn, we're, we're kind of getting the same thing about uh, with the salaries. I mean, we had somebody call wanting to post on our job board starting at $13 an hour. And if they worked out going up to 15, I said, I'm sorry, I can't even accept your posting um, because, it's, you know, we're not going to have... I mean, our students are paying, you know, we, we are a fee-based program, like similar to you guys, we're probably a little bit higher than community college, but um, I'm not going to have these students go through the program and earn less than what they can, like you said, I mean, I saw Del Taco posting the other day for up to $21 an hour, are you kidding me? Um, I just, ethically, I can't do that to these students, you know, they've been working so hard for that. And there's a lot of, but but we get, off, offices are calling all the time, do you have anybody as well as for our nursing assistant and our VM program as well. I mean, they are knocking down the doors. And it's so funny because during orientation, you know, when we do orientation, it's like, oh gosh, do you help with job placement? And I reassured them, I said, trust me, people will be knocking at your door. You will not even need to go out and look for a job. They come to you. It's pretty amazing from when I was in nursing school, you know, many, many years ago, it's, it's changed quite a bit. Great. Thank you, Ms. Leanne. Um, do any other educators or representatives have any questions or for their teachers? Feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, no worries. Well, thank you, college representatives, for sharing some great feedback and updates about your colleges. Um, I'm sure the educators greatly appreciate it. I will now share my screen with a couple of tools that we've been using. Um, in our virtual platform for students and educators. There we go. Um, so one of the first um, website that we've been using, which I'm sure most of you have heard by now, is Program Finder. This website shares um, different career educational programs that are offered at the local high schools and community colleges. So you can see a wide variety and we've actually added in some more I'm noticing. Um, so falling under the health science and medical technology pathway. Raise that out. Um, this is a great tool that we've been using with students um, to kind of show the different sectors and positions that are offered in the medical pathway. Um, we've come across students that, you know, they feel um, there's a short window, uh, whether it's, you know, just being a doctor or a nurse or an e EMT, um, and they don't think of the office side of a medical field. Um, so this website has truly helped them in getting a better understanding. Um, so for example, for the administration side of healthcare, um, this is one of the popular ones. Students have been able to click on this and they can zoom in and see which high schools have those exact pathways where you can get more information about those. And then we've also encouraged students to also do additional research. Um, as we know, within the past couple of years, there have been, of course, some changes <laughs> in the medical field itself. Um, so we know that there, are, um, as of this year, many, um, industries have more positions that are available and new positions that are now available. And I've been doing my best to share that with the educators as well, as I hear from any businesses that inform Vitalink about any openings they may have. Um, so I do share those with the local colleges. So if any high school representatives are interested in being on that list and receiving any opening positions, um, feel free to list that in the chat and I'll do my best to share those with you as well as they come in. Another website that we've been using is Talent Ed. I wanna be sure that everyone can see this as I switched over. Great. From Talent Ed, um, this 
aligns directly with the industry representatives. So as students go into nursing and allied health, there we go. Um, students can watch a motivate. I call those motivational videos. They're so inspiring, kind of helps them identify a little bit better. Um, but as they scroll all the way down to the industry map, this will pinpoint exactly who um, representative wise is available to meet with your students. And these representatives are where they're on this map. Um, so educators can use this if you would like for a representative to come talk to your students or, you know, jump on a quick Zoom video to meet with your students virtually. Um, so students and educators can narrow it down to admin or health or social work and so on. And then by zooming all the way into whatever town you're closest to or wherever you're interested in, um, by selecting whichever dot, it'll let you know which company is in that location. And this link will go directly to that website for that company where you can call them or email them and let them know that you found their information on Talent Ed and you're interested in having a representative speak to your students or share some information with your students. All right. So we are right on schedule, um, just in time for our quick 15 minute break. All right, thank you educators for joining us. I do apologize for the technical difficulties. You all have been in the virtual world with us for two years. So I, I hope that you all can charge it to our head, to my head and not my heart. Um, thank you all for joining us though. We do have some great representatives joining us from Foothill Regional Medical Center. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Wendy who will introduce herself and pass it around um, to the industry representatives that have joined her. Thank you all so much. Thank, thank you, uh, Ari, for that. Again, my name is Wendy Bonilla. I'm the patient experience officer here at Hill Regional Medical Center. So good afternoon. Uh, we're very excited to participate in this virtual medical advisory board. Uh, this virtual panel session, I believe, is going to be high school, college educators will hear about our current trends and skills needed for their students to be successful in this industry. I do have a list of questions um, I, will, uh, I will be asking our panel. So first of all and foremost, I would like um, the Foothill Regional Medical Center team to please um, introduce yourselves with your name, your title. Um, so let's get started with our uh, Chief Nursing Officer. Uh, her name is Glenda Luce. And then it's gonna be Joe, Director of Radiology, Joe Sontag, then Don Ocampo, Director of Rehabilitation. We'll have Dino, Dino Defense, Director of Lab, and then it'll be Joy Gonzalez, Director of Operations for the Hertz Family Health Clinic. Did everybody, uh, was able to hear that? Yes. Okay, so let's start. Yes. Hi, my name is Glenda Luce. I am the Chief Nursing Officer here at Foothill Regional Medical Center. Okay, now Joe. Uh, yeah, I'm Joe Sontag, Director of Radiology at Foothill Regional Medical Center. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. This is Don Ocampo, Physical Therapist, Director of Rehabilitation Services, Foothill Regional Medical Center. Thank you. Hi, my name is Bino Defensor. I am the Interim Director of the lab at Foothill Regional, but I'm the regional director of the laboratory for and pathology services for Alta Hospital System. And my name is Joey Gonzalez. I'm the director of operations over at the Hurt Family Health Clinic. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So I'm going uh, to go ahead and ask the, I'm going to ask the first question and then we'll go down the same list starting with Glenda. Um, so our first question are, is going to be, how did you know that the medical industry was right for you? Oh goodness, that's a tough one. If you talk to my parents, they'll say that I always wanted to be a nurse, but it wasn't until I got in college. Um, I was actually going pre-med and decided I didn't want to commit 
that much to the medical field, so I, I joined a nursing program and um, started right out as a new grad in the critical care area and just really fell in love with it. Wonderful. Now uh, let's hear from Joe. Um, I guess the reason I got in the medical field was, uh, again, my mom's a nurse, my sister's a nurse, so I kind of just have some family history uh, in the medical field. So I kind of started out young. When I was in high school, I was a transporter at the hospital. So it just kind of trickled up higher. And went to school and uh, here I am today. Thanks. Okay, and then Don? Yeah, so for me, um, started out just like Ms. Glenda. <laughs> so funny because it uh, was actually for a pre-med uh, course. So my mom and actually my family doctor uh, recommended the, the route to take physical therapy as a pre-med course. So eventually after college, you know, I fell in love with the rehab realm and I've been doing this for 25 years. So you gotta love what you do. Okay, what about Dino? Well, um, way back home, I was a classical opera singer. Um, but however, I wanted to be a doctor too. And that made me the decision to go to medical technology. So I am the uh, clinical lab scientist by, you know, by profession. So it's a more stable job, <laughs> say that. Good, good. How about Joey? So mine's a little unconventional. So I, I never really set out to be in the healthcare field. Um, and to be honest, I've only been in it for going on a little over three months now. <laughs> so I'm very, very new to uh, to the healthcare industry. And and really, what happened for me is that um, I came. The the our clinic was born out of the Orange County. County Rescue Mission, which is a, a nonprofit profit homeless shelter. And so um, I was there at that shelter or the, the, the rescue mission for a little less than 11 years where um, my manager came to me and kind of talked to me a little bit about the position that I'm currently in right now. And so um, I think most of it was just the leadership qualities that trans that are transferable into the my role here in, in healthcare, and so um, it's it's definitely been a really cool uh, and and rewarding learning experience so far. Wonderful, great to hear uh, from everybody. My next question is: What certifications do students need that they can get while they're in high school that will make them more marketable to employ peers. Let's start with uh, Glenda on that one. I think if we're talking at the high school level, you know, definitely like like Joe had brought up how he volunteered. So doing some volunteer work. I know those are kind of few and far between right now in hospitals, but really trying to get your foot in the door. You know, as far as certifications, there's really nothing specific that would come more at the college level. Um, but really just working on getting your foot in the door, doing some volunteer work, seeing what's out there. Great. Joe? Well, I guess any time you're going to go into the medical field, I guess that any course you could take that might kind of expose you to things in the medical field would help. You know, you could take anatomy courses. Um, you could start with CPR or something like that. Just, you know, different things to um, kind of get you ready to think that if that's the thing you want to do is the medical field that, you know, get yourself exposed to uh, different things like that. I teach our extension eight two. Perfect. Now, uh, Don? Yes, hi. Yeah. For rehab, for physical therapy, there are no really like set of certifications. I agree with Ms. Glenda. I mean, straight from high school, you got to really focus on volunteer work. You know, you you, you have to uh, immerse yourself. You, you need to uh, take a look at the whole picture in, ter in terms of, of health care. Um, but specific classes, perhaps if you could take some electives, perhaps with first aid, uh, CPT coding for, for rehab, and uh, medical terminology. 
one if we want to be specific. But uh, other than that, really, it's volunteer ship work, you know, something that has something to do with the healthcare field. Thank you. Okay, now let's hear from Dino. So on the department that I oversee, straight out of high school, a student could look for a certification for a certified phlebotomy technician. That means for a uh, being a phlebotomist, once you know the the license right now, you, the phlebotomy right phlebotomist right now is one of the in demand jobs in the laboratory field. So straight out of high school, get the CPT certification, and once if they're given a chance to work in the hospital, that will be a good stepping stone for them. Good, good. Um, and now uh, Joey from the Hertz um, Clinic. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, when when uh, schools offer ROP, there's opportunity for um, medical assisting cert certificates. Um, we, we have some entry level positions um, as a medical assistant. Um, patient service representatives, which don't really necessarily need a certificate, but even if there was like um, maybe some certificates in Microsoft Office, you know, the learning outlook and um, using Word and, you know, how to, learning how to um, create a professional email, uh, things, things of that nature, um, that, that can all be very helpful for entry level positions in high school, coming out of high school. Good, good. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, now, my uh, next question is for students entering pre-health pre industry, what advice would you give them to better prepare them for the next level? We'll start. Glenda. You know, basically be open to all opportunities. Um, you know, I know I definitely started down a career path when I was in nursing school of wanting to be a pediatric nurse. And um, the first available position that opened up was training in the intensive care unit, which really I had never even thought about um, as a student. And once I went into that and got the training, you know, really, really enjoyed doing what I was doing. So really be open to all po potential opportunities. Okay, what about uh, Joe? Well, I, I guess the advice I would give uh, anybody going into the medical field would be make sure it's what you want to do. Um, because the medical field's not easy. I mean, the last two years has really shown us that it can be very, very trying to work in the medical field. So I would just, you know, my advice would be just, you know, think hard, um, make sure it's what you want to do. It's like Don said, you know, you have to love what you do um, because and if it's not something you love to do, it's really going to be a struggle sometimes to get through it. Um, but yeah, and, and Glenda had a good advice there too, to uh, keep your options open because there are a lot of different things you can do in the medical field. Thanks. Okay, and we're gonna hear now from the Director of Rehab, Don. Yes, thank you. Yeah, for rehabilitation services, PT, OT, speech, you know, if you're really decided on that path of rehab, um, like what Ms. Glenda mentioned, you know, uh, be open-minded, you know, you, you got to try to to be in that uh, field, you know, try to, uh, to immerse yourself in that um, in that environment. If you could uh, volunteer, go ahead, but have an open mind that you will start from ground up. To me, it seems like, especially in, in, in today's environment, it seems like everything is so easy, you know, but the reality is, is it's very tough. You know, you have to really start from ground up and learn. You know, you got to have an open mind, uh, be always open to criticism and, and to grow. You know, it, it's, it's not an easy uh, task. Uh, so just embrace, you know, embrace the, the environment and uh, learn as much as you can from, from your peers, and um, looking at the different healthcare positions, you know, shadowing, volun volunteer work in a, in a certain uh, place. That's about it. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Don. 
um, we're going to go now to uh, Dino and his perspective on that question. I think you're on mute, Dino. Yeah, what was the question again? The question is, uh, for students entering the pre-health industry, what advice would you give to better prepare them for the next level? Well, first of all, the willingness should be there. They should be willing and the love, like if you want to be in a patient care area, make sure you have that. I think that's really the advice that I want to give. If you have the passion to care for others, that's the most important thing before you get involved in a healthcare profession. Okay. And now we're going to hear from Director of Operations at the Hertz Clinic, uh, Joey. Yeah, I, I think everyone's given some really good advice on this. Um, the only thing I would probably add is um, for those to just seek out learning opportunities. Um, you know, as they do, they can confirm whether or not this is the right field for them. Um, another thing I think is very important is just flexibility, um, being open to change. You know, uh, healthcare industry, it seems as if goes through a lot of change. Um, you know, obviously the pandemic really showed what that could look like. Um, but just having that flexibility and that willingness to be open in that way. Great, great. Thank you for that. Um, my next question is going to be, uh, what would you say is the biggest disconnect you see from incoming medical students? The biggest disconnect. So we're going to set it off with Glenda. I think for me in the nursing arena, there's a, sometimes you'll get a little bit of a disbelief that it's a 24-7 operation. Um, it's like, I have to work weekends, I have to work a night shift, I have to work a holiday. And so there, there's that difficulty, I think, that 24-7 operations have to meet and making sure that um, the people that are coming into the acute care, healthcare side of the business understand that it is 24-7. Okay. Um, Director of Radiology, Joe? Yeah, I would have to agree with Glenda. I mean, I think the disconnect you see with students coming into radiology is they just don't quite understand that, you know, when they come in and start training in a hospital, it's, it's like a job and um, it takes responsibility, it takes commitment, it takes, you know, reliability, knowing that these people are going to be there. Um, so again, I, I just think that sometimes uh, not to put the younger crowd down, but the younger crowd wants a quick fix. They want, you know, an easy job. Um, but in healthcare, there's just no uh, easy job out there. So that's why I would always say, make sure it's, it's what you want to do. I mean, it took me, you know, to get where I am in my position now, it took me 25 years to get there. So, I mean, you got to put the time in. And I think a lot of times they just don't want to, sometimes just don't want to put the time in. But I don't want to put them all down. There are good students out there. There are good people. Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Um, Don? Yes, yes. Uh, for rehab uh, specifically, um, I remember, you know, coming out of this direct from school, personally, and not just for me, but a lot of people have this misconception, oh, I'm going to enter uh, healthcare because it's stable and I will make a lot of money, tons of money. Now, if, if that's how you think, Honestly, this is not the field for you. <laughs> because um, healthcare is really all about service, all right? It's uh, just like what my peers mentioned a moment ago, Ms. Joe and Ms. Glenda, the pandemic came and you see what happened, right? So this is all about service, you know, uh, empathy and also teamwork, okay? This is not about, oh, I'm gonna, do physical therapy rehab because it's in demand. We have the baby boomers out there. The numbers are there, right? I'm going to take nursing because it's also in demand. But at the end of the day, it's not more of a fiscal decision. It's it's really all about service. Secondly, um, I I noticed that for the younger generation coming out of college, they feel like it's all about textbook knowledge, right? But once you graduate, once you're out of there, it's not, it's not just all about what you learned, it's not all about textbook knowledge in the books, you know? 
It's more than that. In the end of the day, you have to be very open-minded and flexible. And you have to have, of course, you have to have good, strong foundation. But in the end of the day, you have grasp and really love this profession. Now, healthcare will not make you a lot of money, but if you enjoy service, if you really enjoy helping others, this is the field for you and you cannot go wrong. Thank you. Hey, great, great. Now, I'm ready to go director of lab, Dino. So, sorry, what, what was the question again? I was in the middle of validation. What would you say is the biggest disconnect you see from incoming medical students? Oh, uh, well, the, the, the disconnect there sometimes is I think the, the reality, sometimes the incoming students, they don't have that grasp because as what my colleagues have said, oh, I want to be in this field because it will make a lot of money. But the, the one thing that sometimes what I've noticed with the new bees coming in this field is what Glenda had said, there is a limitation of like, oh, um, I, I can't work you know, on this ship. I only want to work on this ship. I can only work on weekdays. I don't want to work on, weekday, on weekends. So that's kind of a disconnect there. Uh, that I have noticed. Okay, now we're going to go with, uh, thank you for that. Uh, we're going to go now with Joey. Yeah, I, I, I would just say the kind of the practical side, you know, you have a new incoming uh, medical student coming in and obviously many times there's not much experience in that. And so just kind of the, the, the disconnect of what it, it really is to now put your hands, get your hands dirty and, and, and start, you know, um, dealing with patients and things of that nature. You know, sometimes um, their patients aren't always the, in, in the greatest mood, you know, in regards to what they might be going to. And so that, that, that is kind of something that might take some of our new um, staff uh, back a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think part of it too, and I agree with Joe in terms of just kind of having this um, quick fix. I think we're in a generation, they call the, the, the microwave generation where you get things instantly and it's not necessarily the case, um, you know, when you're coming into work every day and, um, you know, working uh, your long shifts and, you know, dealing with a lot of patients. So um, definitely a disconnect, I would say, for our new incoming medical students. Uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody, on this uh, virtual um, meeting that we're having. Also, I'm getting ready. This is our, my last uh, final question is, what final advice do you have for educators who are preparing students to enter this industry? So this is our last question. We're going to go with uh, Glenda, CNO for Foothill. Um, goodness, that's a good question. I, you know, and I think a lot of times the educators have a better pulse of the, the students than those of us that are out in, in the trenches. Um, really just, you know, encourage them, like we said earlier, keep an open mind. Don't, don't set your mind on one thing in the beginning, because there are so many opportunities out in, in the medical field um, to really jump in and find something that really fits you. And I think that's the blessing of being in healthcare is we can move around a lot and, and find a lot of different things to do. But really just, you know, encourage them to keep an open mind, encourage them to stay with it. Um, it's a difficult field. Um, like Joy just said, a lot of times, you know, we're dealing with people at their worst and it's not, you know, we can't take it personal. We always have to have that objective. Let me take a step backwards and um, help this person get through what they're going through. So just to hang in there. It's, it's a great field to be in. Good, good, good. Now we got uh, Joe, uh, Director of Radiology. Uh, again, yeah, this is a tough question, I guess. Um, for educators, if they're dealing with, you know, students or any that are going to go to, into any part of the medical field, if there's any way you can teach them how to deal with patients, how to deal with families, um, because, again, when, when you're trained to do like an x-ray like we do, I mean, doing the x-ray is the easy part. It's dealing with the family and dealing with the patient themselves because 
I mean, over the last several years, it just seems like the patient population is getting tougher and tougher and tougher to, to have to deal with and to handle. And like Glenda said, you don't want to judge. I mean, that's not what we're here for. Um, so again, if you could teach them any way to or how to approach to, uh, you know, make things go smoothly, I mean, and again, that's very difficult to do. It comes with experience is really what it does. So, but if that's one thing they could do, that would might help them. Thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe. So now we're going with Don, Director of Rehab. Yes, to add to, to what was mentioned already, for me, uh, you know, the word educator, that's heavy, right? Uh, I mean, the way I define educator, it's more holistic as you compare it versus a teacher. To me, I, my advice on educator would be Perhaps, you know, not just to focus on the textbook uh, information, so to speak, you know, or IQ, you know, um, there's, there, there was talk before of IQ versus EQ, right, especially in human resources realm, right. In reality for healthcare, EQ is really more, is heavier, right, uh, people who are more calm, you know, they tend to go more. <laughs> they tend to uh, outlast, in, in, especially during this pandemic period. You know, they're more stable. They're more, um, they're more fit for the job, so to speak, with high stresses and everything. So, uh, uh, for educators, that's going to be my advice. Don't just focus on the textbook information. Let's say anatomy and all of that. Of course, that's that's the job, right? That that is the objective. But at the same time, teach. And also mention to the kids the, the, the importance of why they're doing or why they're taking those courses. So it's pretty much IQ versus EQ, emotional intelligence. And lastly, I, I believe that any educator, especially with what's happening right now in the world, right? We're having all of these difficulties, this inflation and everything. At least some grasp of not really how to run a business, but fiscal responsibility. Because once you, once you enter this field, especially in a leadership position. This is not just all about patient care. You know, it's not just textbook information of what you learn about physical therapy, occupational, you know, how to treat patients. But you're now gonna be in a realm where you're gonna have to balance um, sound clinical judgment. And at the same time, lean ma matrixes, you know, the, in the end of the day, you know, it's, it's, it's also a business. You know, you, ha you have to save lives at the same time. It has to make sense fiscally, right? So those are my, my two things, you know, for our educators. Again, focus on EQ versus IQ and also some sense of uh, fiscal responsibility or, or the business side of healthcare. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Now we're going to go with Dino. So like we all said, healthcare is a tough field, but you could you may get a lot of satisfaction but my advice for educators is when you know when education is provided to students because they play a role in molding the minds of these students um, to emphasize the benefits and it could be the benefits or disadvantage of like what what are the the ups and downs of the different fields when um, when they provide this um, orientation to the students. But what I'm trying to say is we make sure, because nowadays when we are healthcare, we dedicate so much like 60, 70, and 80% of our life. And we ensure that there will still be a life balance. I think that's the most important thing now. But sometimes because the life balance, the personal side, we don't, Put that much attention and we'll just focus and work and work and work. I think that's what I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, lastly, is uh, Joy from um, operations at the Hertz Clinic. Yeah, I would just add um, just to maybe think through what some of the, um, the last question was, what are some of the, the biggest disconnects and maybe see how you could uh, incorporate that into uh, the training, um, giving practical, um, some practical training. But um, 
that that's kind of the big thing I think in terms of like just you know that I think this is good in terms of the feedback that 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 uh, everyone's able to give and um, just kind of some of the things that we feel like uh, new medical students they kind of uh, lack or they struggle in I would say just trying to to, to incorporate that into your guys's curriculum or training and you know um, thinking about work ethic and all that kind of stuff. Good. Um, now back to um, Ari. Okay, thank you so much, industry representatives. Um, I wanted to ask if any of the college or high school representatives have any questions for the industry panel. Um, feel free to unmute yourself or um, list any questions in the chat. Um, for the educators, I've also added in the evaluation link. We have beat our goal today. Our goal was to finish before five. And I know on Friday, people are ready to clock out and head home. Um, I do want to thank this great industry panel for sharing their advice with each of you. Um, please let me know if you do have any questions um, or if you think of any questions after this meeting and I'll share them with Ms. Wendy and her team. Um, but thank you all for joining us. I'll do my best to get the minutes and a recording with you to you within the next two weeks. Thank you all for joining us. Happy Friday Happy and Friday. have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. so much for letting us participate. Bye. Thank you, Ms. Selene and team. Thank you.